Hello friends, today we will see design of single stuff series impedance matching network with the help of a smith chart. So for this we will take a problem, match a load impedance of ZL equals to 100 plus J80 ohm to a 50 ohm line using a single series open circuit stuff. Assuming that the load is matched at 2 gigahertz and that the load consists of register and inductor in series. Now you note down two things over here. We need to design a single stub, single series stub and the stub is open circuited. Now see, first based on this we need to draw a prototype of a design. So this is a prototype. Here this is your load. Here this is your load ZL and this is the stub. This stub is connected in series with the load and it is open circuited. We need to find out the distance of a stub from the load as well as we need to find out length of the stub with the help of a smith chart. So for this first thing is that we need to plot this point ZL on the smith chart. If you want to plot a ZL point that is 100 plus J80 ohm we can't plot it directly on the chart. So we need to normalize this point. So normalization means dividing it by a characteristic impedance which is in our case it is 50. So divide 100 by 50 that is equal to 2 plus J80 by 50 that is equal to J1.6. So this 2 plus J1.6 this point we need to plot it on the chart. So for this we will find out where is the number 2 on the horizontal line. The circle which is passing from number 2 go over that circle in the vertical direction. Similarly, find out the vertical circle plus J1.6. As it is plus, we need to find it out in upper half. This is J1.6 circle. Then go down over by on that circle. The intersecting point of R is equal to 2 circle and J1.6 circle will be your ZL. Now in this way, plot ZL. If you want to know basics about how to plot a point, how to find out the wavelength, you can go for my video basics of smith chart. There you will come to know how to plot a various points and how to find out the related wavelength. So in this way we need to find plot a ZL over there. After plotting a ZL, draw the line passing from center ZL and out of the graph. Then take a distance in the compass center to ZL and draw the circle passing from ZL like this. This circle is called as VSWR circle. This circle is called as a VSWR circle. Now, as this is a series stub, we need to design this stub with respect to ZL. If it is a shunt stub, we need to design with respect to YL. So, as we want to design with respect to ZL, then we will find out the wavelength at a point ZL. So for this, this line which is passing from ZL, just extend that line out of the graph. This graph, this line will intersect the wavelength circle at 0.208 lambda. So that is the wavelength of the point ZL. So find out the wavelength of the point ZL in this way. Then next step is we need to locate the position of the stub. So to find out the position of the stub, we need to find out intersection of this VSWR circle on R is equal to 1 circle. So first we will locate R is equal to 1 circle. So the circle, horizontal circle which is passing from the number 1 on the horizontal line that is called R is equal to 1 circle. So in our case this will be R is equal to 1 circle. Then this VSWR circle will intersect at R is equal to 1 circle. For this, always we have to move in the clockwise direction from ZL. So when we, this is our ZL and if we are moving clockwise direction on VSWR circle from ZL, we will be reaching to the first intersection point and denote this point as a Z1. This is first intersection point. Again, keep on moving in a clockwise direction on VSWR circle we will find a second intersecting point that is a Z2. So Z1 and Z2 are the two possible stub positions. Now this, uh, the distance of a ZL and Z1 in between ZL and Z1 is called the D1. That is the first possible position of the stub. 
so we need to find out first possible position of the stub that is a distance d1 so for this we have to draw the line passing from center z1 and out of the graph so this line will intersect at a wavelength circle at point 328 per lambda then the distance between wavelength distance between zl and z1 that will be our d1 so for this we will just subtract 0.328 lambda minus 0.208 which is the wavelength at z1 and you are getting 0.120 lambda is the first possible stub position that is d1 now we need to find out l1 related to this d1 that is the length of the stub so for this we need to find out the uh, reactance value at this z1 that is jx value of the z1 so j how to find out the jx value at z1 that is the z1 point is lying on which vertical circle so this is your vertical circle where the z1 point is lying so this is this thing so z1 point is lying on this vertical circle so we need to find out this vertical circle as well as it is lying on r horizontally it is lying on r is equal to 1 circle so for this first we need to read out the position of this z1 so you can see z1 position can be written as as it is lying you know, on the r is equal to 1 circle horizontal circle so we can write z1 equals to 1 minus as it is below center line we have to write minus and the jx circle which is passing from z1 it is j1.33 so we have, we can write the position for z1 as 0 minus j1.33 now what we need to do we need to uh, nullify this minus j1.33 okay this impedance minus j1.33 so if you want what we need to do we need to add the length of a transmission line which can provide you plus j1.33 so we have to find out the position or we have to plot the point plus j1.33 on the chart so for this we will just plot this plus j1.33 point on the chart as it is a plus it will be in the upper half of the smith chart then as it doesn't have any r value so that will be only plus j1.33 point so the web, we need to find out the wavelength at this point so what we will do we will just draw the line extended uh, out from this point and that will intersect on the wavelength circle and whatever that uh, intersecting point that we can call it as a wavelength for this plus j1.33 so like this wavelength for this plus j1.33 will be 0.147 lambda now see now we need to find out the length so length from where we need to find out the length so this is the end point of the stub 0.14147 lambda and the other end of a stub is open circuited so we need to locate open circuit point on the graph so we know that at open circuit uh, for open circuit z is equal to infinity so where is the z is equal to infinity point so this point at this point z is equal to infinity so this will be the open circuit point when we are using the graph for an uh, as a imp uh, impedance chart this is your open circuit point okay so in the earlier videos we have seen single stub shunt stub single shunt stub design where this point will be the short circuit point because it is a we have used this smith chart as a admittance graph here we are using it as a impedance with respect to zl so this will be your open circuit point so this is open circuit point z is equal to infinity so we have to find out what is the wavelength at open circuit point that is 0.25 lambda so this will be the wavelength if you want to find out l l is a distance between open circuit point and this j1.33 in the clockwise direction so if you are moving in a clockwise direction from this open circuit point we have to move like this 0.25 lambda say when we are coming to this point this is the end of the first cycle 
where wavelength is 0.5 at the center line and from above the center line again a second interaction is second cycle is started that is counting will start from 0.0, .0. so how we can find out the wavelength l1 l1 is a addition of this distance 0 0.5 minus 0.25 plus it is 0.147 which is in the next cycle so l1 will be equal to 0 0.2 0 0.5 minus 0 0.25 will be 0.25 plus 0.147 lambda so this is the second cycle distance so total L1 will be 0.397 lambda. So the length of the stub will be 0.397 lambda. This is the first possible design of the stub. Now in this uh, video, we will see how to design a second possible position of the stub. So for this, what we have to do? We have to consider the second intersecting point of a VSWR circle and R is equal to one circle that is Z2. And whatever the process we have done for Z1, same thing we have to do for Z2. So for this, what we will do, that is, we will draw this uh, line passing from center Z2 and out of the graph. And we will find out the wavelength at that uh, point, that is Z2 point. So this line will intersect the wavelength circle at 0.172 lambda. So this 0.172 lambda will be the wavelength at Z2. Now we need to find out the distance from ZL to Z2 in a clockwise direction. That means we have to move like this clockwise. ZL is 0.208 lambda. Then we have to move clockwise like this. So when we reach at this point, this will be 0.5. Okay, so one cycle is completed and another counting, new counting is started from the above center line 0, 0.0. So if you want to find out a distance from ZL to Z2, then you have to first find out a distance in between 0 0.5 and 0 0.208. And then we have to add 0 0.172 to it. So D2, that is the distance between uh, ZL and Z2, that is equal to 0 0.5 minus 0 0.208 plus 0 0.172 that is equal to 0 0.463 lambda okay so that is your d2 that is the second possible position of the star now we need to find out the l2 which is related to this d2 so for this we need to read out the position of this z2 we need to read out the position of this z2 so Z2 is lying on one horizontal circle, R is equal to 1. So the position can be read out like 1 plus, as it is in upper half, 1 plus. Then we need to find out at which vertical circle it is lying. So it is at 1.33. So we can write the position of the Z2 as 1 plus J 1.33. Now we need to nullify this plus J 1.33. So for this, what we need to do, we need to locate first locate the point minus J1.33 and find out the wavelength at that point. So that can be done like this. See, we will find out the point minus J1.33 as it is at, it doesn't have any R value. We need to locate the point at the periphery so this is your point minus j 1.33 then draw the line from this point straight line from this point uh, outside the graph so wherever it intersect an uh, wavelength circle that will be your wavelength that is 0.358 lambda okay so that will be your wavelength 0.358 lambda then we know that this stub is a open circuit stub. Stub is an open circuit stub. So if you want to find out the L2, then you need to find out the distance from, that is length from open circuit end. So this is your open circuit end. So the open circuit end per wavelength is 0.25 lambda. So you need to find out the distance between this, that is 0 0.35, uh, 353 lambda minus 0.25 lambda so your l2 will be 0 0.353 minus 0 0.25 lambda 
that is equal to 0.103 lambda. So in this way we can find out two possible positions of the stub. Two possible positions of the stub. Two possible series impedance uh, series uh, position of the stub. And we can draw both the solutions. That is solution one. This is solution two. And thus we can design two solutions for a single stub series impedance matching problems. So two solutions are possible for also for a shunt stub and series stub. Thank you.